Hello, I'm Gajanan Devedi, and today we will discuss about the evolution and development of education in modern times during the British rule. It is a very important topic for UPSC exam, as the exam has asked multiple times the questions from this area. Not only this, every competitive exam and state pieces exam, they have kept on asking questions from this area. Before we start discussing about the evolution of the education in the British time, a basic question is that when the British were imperial powers in India, and the basic purpose of the British rule in India was to drain the wealth from India or to economically exploit India, why did they try after all to promote modern education in India? The answer is simple. If you figure out the basic reasons the British tried to promote modern education in India, it can be understood something like this. Look, the company had come to India for the trade, but gradually the company got transformed into a big ruler. When it had captured big part of India, it started ruling over big number of people. And certainly when this was there, a transformation was going on in the character of the company. There was increasing needs of administration. If the company would have tried to bring all the British to fill all the ranks of administration in India, certainly it would have been very costly. And that is why the company first started promoting education in India because it was looking for somewhat educated Indians to fill the lower ranks of administration. So the first reason why the company promoted and the British promoted modern education in India was the administrative need. The second factor which prompted the British to promote education in India was that the British were looking for the cultural changes in India. Education was one of the ways the British could have imposed the superiority of the imperial culture over the Indians. Certainly, education would have also given them cultural victory over India. So this was the second factor why the British they were promoting modern education in India. One of the purposes of promoting modern education in India was to create a psychological hold over the Indian by the British imperialist rulers by projecting British culture as a superior culture. Third factor was that industrial revolution in England was intensifying. England was the first country in the world to witness industrial revolution. And then certainly the British were always inclined to make India as a big market of their industrial products. The British wanted to bring education in India to bring the cultural changes, to bring the behavioral changes among the Indians. Once the Indians would be trained in British educational system, certainly there would be behavioral change among the Indians and that would increase the demand of the British industrial product. You're getting my point. Am I clear? So another thing, another factor that prompted the British to bring a modern education system in India was to convert India into a market of their British industrial products. There was another factor. The Europeans, they believed in white man's burden theory. It was a racial theory. The Europeans believed that imperialism was also one of the ways of civilizing other parts of the world. They believed that the white people, they had a moral obligation on them to civilize every part of the world. Basically, this was a racial theory, but under this civilizational mission, under this white man burden theory, 
the British certainly believed that modern education should be used to promote their style of civilization in other parts of the world. So what we find here that there were multiple factors which prompted the British to promote modern education system in India. If you talk about the efforts of the company to promote modern education in India, the initial effort was not very systematic. Before the Charter Act of 1813, the company did not go for very systematic effort to promote education in India. But yet there were some efforts by the company to promote education and they were very significant. Like the first one was Calcutta Madarsa. Calcutta Madarsa, when Calcutta Madarsa was established in 1781 and Calcutta Madarsa was established by Hastings. Hastings 1, the time period of Hastings 1, we discussed was 1772 to 74 to 85. We know that after the Regulating Act of 1773, he became Governor General of Bengal. No? So as the Governor General of Bengal, he was trying to promote the learning and there, with his support, Calcutta Madarsa was established in 1781. Calcutta Madarsa. So basically, this was established to study Arabic, Arabic and Persian. So basically, both the languages when studied would help the British in studying the Muslim laws, you know, both the laws of Hindus and Muslims. Gradually, the British, they were trying to study in India because they wanted to rule over us. So first, they were interested in knowing the laws of the Muslims and laws of the Hindus. The first effort by the British to study the Muslim laws, this got reflected in the form of Calcutta Madrasa. The next big thing that came was 1784, when Asiatic society was established. 1784, Asiatic society was established by William Jones. Sir, William Jones established Asiatic society. An Asiatic society was most remarkable institution that time because it was for Indological study. It was for the study of Indology. Now, what is Indology? Another basic question. The study of South Asian, no? the study of South Asian history, culture, language, and literature. That is called Indological study. The British were rulers, no? And the rulers must know about the subjects. That is why they were promoting so many studies about India. And that is why they promoted Indological study. The Asiatic Society that was established in 1784 by William Jones was one of the biggest societies that time for Indological studies. The third big initiative by the British was the Sanskrit College, no? Sanskrit College was there in 1791, and this was established by Jonathan Duncan. Jonathan Duncan established Sanskrit College. Sanskrit College was established at Banaras. Sanskrit College was established at Banaras, and this was there to study the Hindu laws. Don't you think that the British were studying the Muslim laws? The British, they were studying the Hindu laws because they wanted to rule over us. The British, they were also studying Indology, no? the history, culture, language, and literature of the people. They were rulers. Basically, they wanted to know about us, to be able to very well rule over us. This is what they were looking for. Every effort, initial effort, was just directed towards helping them in overall administration. Then a college was established by Wellesley. This college was Fort William College. And the Fort William College was established, where was Fort William? Calcutta, no? So this Fort William College was established at Calcutta. This was established in 1800. And basically this was a training college to train the civil servants for administration in India. The British were foreigners. And if they had to rule over India, they needed training to deal with the people. 
that is why this training college was established by Wellesley. That time, the Governor General was Richard Wellesley. Richard Wellesley. The time period of Wellesley was seventeen ninety-eight to eighteen hundred and five. He established this. Richard Wellesley. He established this Fort William College for training the British for the overall administration in India. And then certainly, if you talk about the initial efforts by the British, certainly we have to count the efforts of Christian missionaries where they were constantly promoting British-like, English-like education system here in India. These were the initial efforts which were taken by the British trying to promote Indian type of learning, directed towards helping them in overall administration how UPSC would ask the questions from these areas? One question was asked by UPSC. See the question? The question was asked by UPSC in 2020. What was the question that was asked? Well, as Lee established the Fort William College at Calcutta. Because, simple, he wanted to train British civilians for administrative purpose in India. The basic purpose was always administration. Simple to understand. One more question by UPSC that was asked for UPSC in 2018. We have to go for a matchmaking, founder and the institutions. No? And when we go for the matchmaking in this question, all these are UPSC questions 2018. This question was asked by UPSC. First, it says Sanskrit College at Benares. Sanskrit College at Banaras was established not by William Jones. It was established by Jonathan Duncan. No? It was established by Jonathan Duncan. So this is wrong. It's gone. William Jones established Asiatic Society. No? Then Calcutta Madarsa. This was established by Hastings. There is no doubt about this. So second is correct. Third, Fort William College. Arthur Wellesley. No, he was Richard Wellesley. Arthur Wellesley was brother of Richard Wellesley. It's difficult to figure out this minor change in exam time. No? So how to go for that? First simple thing. First is absolutely wrong. Is the simplest to figure out? Sanskrit college at Banaras. This was established by Jonathan Duncan. And we know that William Jones established the Asiatic society. First is absolutely wrong. Then eliminate one out of A and then eliminate one out of C. Now you're left with two and three. No? Then second is absolutely correct. We know that. So anyway, three would be eliminated if you want. No, that would make it easier for you to figure out the answer. If you can solve a question from multiple methods, the possibility of negative marking would be very less. If you talk about the next big thing, it was the Charter Act of 1813. And the Charter Act of 1813 was the first systematic effort by the British to promote education in India. The first systematic effort by the British. The Charter Act of 1813 provided for one lakh rupee, provided for one lakh rupee for promoting education, science and literature among the native Indians education, science, and literature among the native Indians. So the British would only consider you educated much when you got very good taste in education, science, and literature. So do you study literature? That is the question. Because the British created this ICS. No? And don't you think that the spirit of ICS is very much like that? They would look for very qualified people. Literature is expression. And when you're going through literature, your expression becomes very good. No? The British said that one lakh rupee should be used for promoting education, science, and literature among the native Indians. This was the first time the company accepted a legal responsibility on itself for promoting education. The earlier efforts were not systematic. This was a legal obligation on the company, not the Charter Act. So the question is why? Why the company was imposed with this legal obligation? Why the British, they were taking this legal obligation on them? There were two basic reasons. 
first the free trade demand how to connect this free trade demand look the east india company had got three monopolies three big monopolies just be very clear about it very conceptual the east india company got three monopolies one was the trade in india was the monopoly of the east india company one was the tea trade that was the monopoly of the east india company one was the china trade but don't you think that the company had the got monopoly company got the monopoly in all the three major areas of the trade india trade was the most lucrative trade for the company so don't you think that only the company would trade with india and in england industrial revolution was rising and many industrialists and the traders were there in england and don't you think that they were excluded out of this trade of india and there was a huge industrial revolution in england now they said that they should all be allowed to trade freely with india the monopoly of the company was obstructing this free trade no that is why they pressurized the parliament and that brought the charter act of 1813 and in this charter act of 1813 the monopoly of the company to trade in india was gone and basically india would be a free trade for all the british traders so don't you think that there would be a huge supply of the british industrial product and if this is so a big market had to be created in india so what was needed cultural changes behavioral changes so what was needed one new education system this time the company would be imposed with one legal obligation to bring 1 lakh rupee for educating indians the second factor that was responsible for this you will find that they were enlightened indians like ram mohan roy no they were enlightened indians like ram mohan roy raja ram mohan roy like enlightened indians they demanded modern education for the indians for two reasons first reason was that they were looking for reforms they wanted to use the modern education to reform the society to uplift the masses second reason why they were demanding modern education because it would increase the employability of the indians indian style of education would not give them the government job what was needed british type of education to increase the employability of the indians that is why the enlightened indians like raja ram mohan roy they were always demanding modern education if this is so you should have one related information what is that raja ram mohan roy alexander duff alexander duff and david hare and david hare in 1817 they established the famous hindu college at calcutta in the college at calcutta no so many questions you will find that they have been asked on this in 1817 ram mohan roy alexander duff no and david hare they established the hindu college at calcutta that itself was providing british like modern education they were big supporters of the british like modern education so there was a demand of free trade and the enlightened indians they were demanding british like modern education all this combined together bringing the charter act of 1813 1 one lakh rupee was given for educating indians but there was a trouble the trouble was that this money could not be utilized for a very long time no because there was a big controversy between the anglicist and the orientalists who were the anglicists they said british like education and english should be the medium the 1 lakh rupee that was given for educating indians it should be directed towards british like education and english should be the medium anglicists they were orientalists what they said that the british suddenly cannot replace such a big system in such a big country so they should rather use 1 lakh rupee to promote the indian style of traditional type of indian type of education system the orientalists they supported indian style of education system the anglicists supported the british style of education system simple 
one lakh rupee was not utilized for a long time. There was a big controversy between the Anglicists and the Orientalists. Eventually, this controversy was settled when Macaulay gave his famous report that was called Macaulay's Minute of 1835. Of 1835. Macaulay's Minute of 1835. So what is minute? No, when you talk about Macaulay, he gave a minute in 1835. What is a minute? Minute is just a report. Report, no? Who is Macaulay? In the Charter Act of 1833, in the Charter of Act of 1833, a law member was added to the Council of Governor General. A law member was added to the Council of Governor General. This first law member was Macaulay. Macaulay was the first law member in India. And it was the time of Governor General Lord William Bentinck. The Governor General was Lord William Bentinck. The time period of Lord William Bentinck was 1828 to 35. Macaulay was the law member in the Executive Council of the Governor General, Lord William Bentinck. Now, when Macaulay gave the minute, what is a minute? A report. No, basically it was a report. It completely supported the Anglicist view. Macaulay said, British like education system and that should be given through English medium. That was Macaulay's minute. It settled the dispute. And now from this time onward, one lakh rupee was used for giving the British like modern education in India. But there was a trouble. Macaulay said that one lakh rupee is not sufficient to educate everyone. So what he said then that we will follow something that would be called downward filtration theory. What was this downward filtration theory? Downward filtration theory. The British said, one lakh rupee, we cannot educate everyone. So what we will do, we will educate few. They would educate more number of people. No, they would further educate more number of people. So what was this? Downward was infiltrating the education. This was called downward filtration theory. The British said, we will educate a few. This is their responsibility to educate others. Downward would infiltrate the education in India. This is how they would go for educating Indians. That was Macaulay's minute. Now, a small si problem ho jayegi. Don't you think that Macaulay's minute would not support mass education? No? Because it was downward filtration theory. Only the elite and the upper sections of society would get educated. And at the same time, don't you think that it would not support women education? That time the British would not support women education. Why the women education would not be supported? Another logical thing that you should try to understand. We are developing country. And still, we are very conservative society. Many people still do not like women working outside home. This is the truth. We have to accept it honestly. Think about that time, how conservative society India would be. And that time when India was such a conservative and patriarchal society, the women would not be allowed to work outside home. So why the British would invest the money to educate the women? Don't you think that this type of downward filtration theory would not support mass education would not support women education. There were problems with this downward filtration theory of my colleague. The biggest turning point, no? The biggest turning point in history of modern education in India was Charles Wood Dispatch of 1854. Charles Wood Dispatch of 1854 was so significant that it was called Magna Carta of English education in India. No? Charles Wood Dispatch it was called Magna Carta of English education in India. Charles Wood was that time the president of board of control. And later he would become the secretary of state for India. Charles Wood in 1854 
sent a dispatch, educational dispatch. It was so significant that it was called Magna Carta of English education in India. What is Magna Carta? Simple, Magna, no? Magna is great. Carta is document. So the great document of English education in India was Charles Wood Dispatch. This was there in times of Dalhousie. The time period of Dalhousie was 1848 to 56. Charles Wood Dispatch was there. Dalhousie was very imperialist. No? And this dispatch was just a reflection of the imperialist approach of the British that time. It clearly said that the aim of the dispatch was to spread the Western culture in India. So it was very clear in its aim what it wanted to spread the Western culture in India to increase the demand of the British products. Dalhousie was always known for capturing the territories in India, doctrine of lapse and so many other things. No? But don't you think that so many territories the British were directly now controlling to convert them into market for their products. Education system has to be a reflection of the same imperialist and industrial type of approach of the British to create more market in India. So Charles Wood said that the aim was to spread Western culture in India. And that is why this was called Magna Carta of English education in India. It was not Magna Carta of Indian education. It was Magna Carta of English education in India, reflecting that imperialistic type of approach of the British. What were the main provisions of this? First of all, Macaulay is minute or the Macaulay's report completely supported English type of education. No? British education through English medium. Charles Wood made a difference. He said that no vernaculars are also very important. Because if a British like education had to be given to the Indians and only English would be used, only the upper and elite classes of society, they would get influenced by this type of system. And if you have to make, if you had to make this system more general for everyone, then vernacular should also be used to educate the people in British like education system. So he came up with a more logical plan for the British. How this was vernacular, no vernacular for the primary level of the education, vernacular plus English at the middle layer of education and only English at the university life level of the education. So vernacular. Vernacular, primary, no, vernacular, primary, then vernacular plus English, middle, no, vernacular and English at the middle layer to keep the transition very alive and English at the university level. That was more logical plan that was given by Charles Wood. Then he also said that the government should give the grants, no, to promote education through the private institutions. And he also recommended for establishment of universities based on the Woods Dispatch recommendation. The universities were established in 1857, were established in 1857 in three big presidency towns, Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras, and Madras, Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras. What we have to understand here that the basic purpose of Charles Wood was to make the education system more widespread. Certainly he was deviating away now from Macaulay's minute and the downward filtration. He also supported women education. So a humble beginning in India was there towards women education as well. A better development in women education came because of many philanthropists and the Indian reformers one great name in the field of women education is Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar. No? When you talk about Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, Vidya Sagar, he was the secretary of, he supported many schools, but then one question was also asked by UPSC that he was secretary of the Bethune School. No? Bethune School. 
this bethune school was established by j e d bethune and established by j e d bethune in 1849 around this was one of the first schools in india dedicated to the girls education so after the woods dispatch no the mass education there was one step towards better bigger education system it was still not mass education but a better approach towards education that was at the same time the women education also took a very humble at least start was there this was the woods dispatch of 1854 now let's try to solve some of the questions asked by upsc from all these areas that we have discussed first the aim of education as stated by woods dispatch of 1854 was what was that the spread of western culture in india no simple and it was not creation of employment opportunity for the for the indians the promotion of literacy among the indians or the introduction of scientific temper the british would do every act in india to serve their imperial and industrial goal is that simple it was it was clearly stated by the aim of the woods dispatch 2003 upsc question this is another question regarding woods dispatch which of the following statements are true 2018 upsc question this is so this grand senate system yes it was there given by the woods dispatch then establishment of universities yes it was recommended and later the universities were also established at calcutta bombay and madras third english as a medium of instruction at all the levels no this is incorrect no there woods deviated away from the macaulay's minute and said that not only english rather vernacular should also be used at the primary level vernacular and english at the middle layer and english at the university level so three is absolutely wrong no then do one thing eliminate three out of b eliminate three out of c and eliminate three out of d you get your answer a you studied about macaulay's minute and you studied about the woods dispatch but the question is that you please is asking did you try to compare every single question in mains they have asked that what do you think don't you think that even preliminary examination they are asking what do you think because you do not have to mug up the provisions if you can compare the wood dispatch with the mccall is my nude anyway solving the question is very easy you do not have to mug up the facts facts are not history no intelligent interpretation of those facts certainly that would create the sense of history facts are needed to make you understand something but once you understand the questions are very conceptually built there in upsc then one more question who among the following was the, was associated as the secretary of the hindu female school which later came to be known as bethune female school he was ishwar chandra vidya sagar 2021 this year upsc asked this question very simple questions they are asking at times so 50% of the questions they would be just like that to the hunter commission the next thing was the hunter commission of over education in 1882 and what you should know here that this was in times of ripon the time period of ripon was 1882-84 as the viceroy and governor general after the revolt the viceroy and governor general both of them combined the post would be there so ripon the time period was 1882-84 that was the time this hunter educational commission was there another related information that you should have there was one more hunter commission no there was one more hunter commission and this hunter commission was there in 1919 and this different second hunter commission was there after the jallianwala bag issue no so we are not talking about the hunter commission of 1919 you have to be very careful we are not talking about the hunter commission that was there in 1919 after jallianwala bag we are talking about the first hunter commission that was educational commission appointed by ripon ripon was very much a pro indian governor general some governor generals they were very much pro indian one was lord william bentinck one was ripon always very much pro indian and ripon is always known for 
supporting the growth and development of the local bodies like the district and municipal boards. This commission reflected the view of Ripon himself, no? And said that the school education should be entrusted with the local bodies like district and the municipal boards. Then a big commission was there in 1902 and this was Thomas Raleigh Commission. This Raleigh Commission was appointed by Karjan. Karjan. The time period of Karjan was 1899 to 1905. That was the time period of Karjan. Karjan was one of the most imperialistic governor general in India. If Ripon and Benting, they were very much pro-Indian governor general, Dalhousie and Karjan, they were always those governor generals who tried to suppress nationalism in India. Karjan, very imperialist in his approach, his time period was 1899 to 1905. He convened a roundtable conference of the educationists and the education officers from across India at Shimla, which led to establishment of, which led to appointment of a committee. The committee was called Thomas Raleigh Commission or committee in 1902. And the recommendations of this commission became the basis of the famous Universities Act of 1904. Based on the recommendations of Raleigh Commission, there was one act. This was called Indian Universities Act in 1904. Karjan was always considered the governor general who tried to suppress nationalism. No? He brought the plan of partition of Bengal. He was trying to suppress nationalism in India and he knew that the Universities in India, they were becoming the hub of rising nationalism in India. That is why this rally commission recommended for very strict affiliation rule for the universities. Any nationalist activity, the affiliation was gone. No, the government got the chance to veto any of the decisions that would be brought by the Senate of the university. What is a Senate in a university? It is the main governing body in a university that would decide about its academics and management and everything. So through this Indian University Act, basically Karjan tried to increase the control over Indian University. The British government, it increased the control over Indian universities. And that is why the Indian University Act was strongly criticized by the nationalists that time. Then there was another commission that was called Sadler Commission. Sadler Commission, the time period was 1917. Look, Hunter Commission was for school education, no, primary and secondary. Raleigh Commission was for university education. So what you needed, a commission that could look for entire field of education now, no? If Hunter Commission was for school education, if Raleigh Commission was for university education, this Sadler Commission was there to look into the entire field of education. Sadler Commission recommended something that would give basis to the modern education system in India as well, that we also follow. For example, what it said, a 12 years school education with intermediate. Are we also not following this at this stage? The 12 years school education with intermediate, then only the university layer of education, not otherwise. Then it also recommended that everybody should not be promoted to university education. Only those who were capable of sustaining university education, they should be promoted to university. Otherwise, 12 years school education, not more than that for them. So basically, Sadler Commission tried to come up with a more logical education system in India where the quality of university education should be very high. No, that was Sadler Commission. Look, if you talk about the reform of 1919, just try to understand, another remarkable change would be there with the act of 1919. 
the act of 1919 gave diarchy what was this diarchy just try to understand in a very simple way the first world war the first world war the time period was 1914 to 1919 the first world war was a big war total war no and the british were struggling so that time they promised self determination to the indians after the war now they had to come up with some type of reforms to appease the indians somewhat and that is why once the war was over they had to come up with a reform and that took the shape of the government of india act 1919 what they provided for diarchy what was diarchy diarchy no there was a dichotomy in the execution of the subjects in provinces in provinces the british administration would be divided central administration and provincial administration no in provinces the subjects were divided into two categories one was called reserved subject one was called the transferred subject no reserved subject they would be dealt by the british executive councillors the british executive councillors they looked after the reserved subjects these were the subjects which were very important for the british for example you say finance no you say police jail all the important subjects the british they kept reserved for themselves then there was the category of transferred subject and the transferred subjects they were given to indian ministers indian ministers were to look after the transferred subjects they were the less important subject for the british and more problematic to deal with for example education health no agriculture all the subject the british thought very problematic to deal with and less important for them they gave that to the indians that you deal with this this was a dual like system no and that is why it was called diarchy in provinces given by the act of 1919 so after the act of 1919 education became basically a transferred subject and was given to the indian ministers so indian ministers they were dealing with education but still the development of education in india was still very moderate the trouble was that if they wanted to improve education in india where were the finances because the finances were still controlled by the british without the finances it was very difficult to improve education but yet a change was there from this time onward the indian ministers they were dealing with education then there was hartlock committee in 1929 it was very similar to the sadler committee like recommendation that hartlock gave the recommendation it simply said that as there was quantitative increase in the number of educational institutions the quality has deteriorated it said that the quantity of the number of the educational institutions in india it has increased so the quality has deteriorated and that is why those students no those who are from rural area and mostly they want to go for rural pursuit they should not be encouraged to go for the overall education rather they should be retained just at the middle vernacular school stage that will do so less burden on the education system to create more excellence again this was the recommendation of the hartlock committee of 1929 be very clear about the years of this committee multiple times upsc and state pcs exams they have asked questions on all these commissions every single fact that i have discussed with you you can find multiple questions on every single fact that we have discussed a big turning point was there and that was the vardha system of education the system of education that was called vardha system of education this was actually given by gandhi ji mahatma gandhi gave this vardha system of education what was this look the government of india act the government of india act 1935 provided for provincial autonomy the provinces were autonomous in dealing with most of the subjects by themselves and all the subjects now they were given to the indians in provinces to deal with so education 
that would be dealt by the Indian ministers. Based on the act of 1935, the elections were convened in 1937 in provinces and in most of the provinces, Congress formed the popular ministries. So basically Congress ministries, now they were dealing with education by 1937. The Congress leaders, a debate started what type of education system now we should follow. Gandhiji started writing a series of articles in the journal called Harijan. No? This journal Harijan was started by Gandhiji. And it is very interesting to know that the word Harijan itself was coined by Gandhiji. Gandhiji did a lot for upliftment of the depressed classes. He coined the word Harijan and he started the journal Harijan. Then he wrote a series of articles that became the basis of the Vardha system of education and that was also called basic education. Two basic pillars of this basic education, they were vocational training, manual work, no? Vocational training and manual work and mother tongue, correct? Right? Two things, manual work, vocational training, and mother tongue for the students. Vocational training and manual work would make the system of education very sustainable for many. No, because economy gains would also be there. At the same time, mother tongue would make it very easy for the student to understand the new ideas. Based on the ideas given by Gandhiji, a committee was appointed at Vardha and this committee was headed by Zakir Hussain. The committee was appointed at Vardha and this was headed by Zakir Hussain. The celebi that was decided by this committee of Zakir Hussain was the basis of this. That is why it was called Vardha system of education, originally given by Gandhiji. The Congress ministries tried to implement it, but there was a trouble. The Second World War broke out in 1939. No? The Second World War broke out in 1939. India was involved into the Second World War without any consultation and the Congress ministries resigned in protest. No? The Congress ministries resigned because India was involved into the Second World War by the British without any consultation. Certainly Indians were not very happy about this. The Congress ministries resigned and then the Vardha scheme of education later could not be implemented. After independence, Gandhiji and the ideas given by Gandhiji, Vardha scheme of education, Gandhian ideal, some of them, they were incorporated by the Indian constitution as well. But that time, this Vardha scheme could not be implemented. The last plan before independence, no, that was the Sargent plan. And this educational plan, that was the Sargent plan that was given in 1944, by Sargent, who was the educational advisor to the government of India. One remarkable thing was there that you must know because this was a very distinct feature and the most remarkable feature, free and compulsory education. No? Free and compulsory education for the students for the age group of six and 11. So this was the first time the idea of free and compulsory education was given. Certainly, it was easier said than done. No, we are still trying to go for a universal education like coverage, but it's very difficult. That time, it remained very theoretical, but this was the first time. This was the last plan that was given by the British. Now, when we see the British educational system and different development during the British rule, we'll find that there were some basic problems in the British education system. First problem, it would not support mass education. Only the elite sections of society, they would be able to get a very good education. The British would not support mass education because welfare of the people was not the concept of the imperial state like that of Britain. Second, women education, the effort would remain very theoretical. No, because again, the imperial power would not promote much women education like effort in India. Third problem, technical education was not promoted because technical education would lead to more industrialization in India. The British 
would try to keep india as the unsaturated market for their own industrial product they would not promote industrial education in india and the basic problem with the education system of the british that the education was not directed towards nation building no no matter how educated a person was that person may be or may not be very nationalist in approach because the british education system did not promote nationalistic sentiment so education was there the civil services they were there that time as well but not directed towards nation building you will also be a civil servant no you would also be part of indian civil services but now it is designed to serve the nationalistic purpose just like that after education a system was needed that would serve the purpose of building nation so a related information will last just after independence jawaharlal nehru appointed radha krishnan commission no when you talk about this radha krishnan commission it was appointed in 1948 and then it gave its recommendations in 1949 some basic things from this radha krishnan commission it supported again the 12 year pre university education intermediate like system that is still there then it gave 3 years for degrees no for graduation 3 years thoda zyada time de diya nahi kyunki mostly student to ek ek din mein graduation ka exam clear kar de rahe hain nahi so intelligent you have to see know that so when you go there in interview they would ask question from your educational background so no matter what what is your stream you should give a very good respect to your graduation subject as well 3 years degree and it recommended for establishment of ugc university grants commission based on its recommendation ugc was established in 1953 and ugc was given a statutory position by the ugc act in 1956 it is looking like reverse right first came university then came the act no first came the ugc and then came the act it looks like reverse but don't you think that first came aadhar and then came the act just like that first came ugc and then came the act to give it as is a very statutory position and last thing you have to see question you have to go for a chronological order what's this batch 1854 no my call is minute when this was there 1835 sergeant plan when this was there 1944 <coughs> indian education hunter commission it was there 1882 so don't you think that two should come at the first place three was the last plan given by the british this should come at the last place a the answer once we are good in the basic basically all the upsc questions they can be solved so easily all these are upsc question this question was also asked by upsc 1997 a very important part for all the competitive exams development of education in india